Welcome to Chinchilla Squeaks. I still, I feel like after today, I can stop saying I've rebranded because especially after KubeCon, I think this is interview number five in the past 10 days from KubeCon alone. So Mm -hmm. um, weekly wasn't really making any sense. I actually have a repeat guest. Um, I'd have to go back and check when the last time you were on was, but um, I do remember when we met somewhere at a some conference in Berlin, you were so enthusiastic about what you were working on. And I think it was quite early days at the time. Um, I'm really pleased to have you back. And um, so joining me today is Edith Levine from Solo.io. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing really well and still excited. <laughs> <laughs> good, good to hear. Good to hear. Good to hear. I wish I could remember when it was, but I feel like it was maybe two years ago. But let's, yeah. let's start with what Solo is and then let's kind of go from there and figure out what you've been up to the past couple of years yeah for sure so i mean solar and the nutshells is uh trying aiming to solve the connectivity problem that the migration from monolithic to microservices uh encouraged so you know when you when we move from monolithic to microservices um that gave a lot of benefit to a lot of people who actually adopt microservices though it also creates some challenges and specifically the challenges around the connectivity. So, you know, three challenges, main challenges that I recognized back then when I started it. One thing is that how do I expose my application mm-hmm. that running in my infrastructure to the outside world? How do I connect two applications running in my infrastructure? As well as how am I taking those microservices and compose the application from it? And those, those three problems should have been solved. And, and we basically, yeah, we basically were excited about solving it. So we had two main products that we, in the company. One of them is API Gateway built on top of Envoy. Uh, and it's named Glue Edge. And uh, basically, it's going to solve the two first problem, which is how do you expose your application to the outside world, as well as how do you connect two applications that they're running on your infrastructure as an internal gateway. As I said, it's built on top of Envoy, which means that we are running Envoy in production for the last four years. We know it in and out, we customize that and so on. So that's the first product. And the second product is called Glue Mesh. And Glue Mesh basically is trying to solve the third problem, which is how do you compose those applications? And in the nutshell, what Glue Mesh is, is a management plan for service mesh. Yep. Specifically, it's coming out of the box with trying SPL, to solve the but third it's also problem, which is how support the managed solution like App Mesh and the Open box. Service Mesh when it will be available for Microsoft. And, and the idea that it's trying to solve is the fact that there are going to be more than one instance. Yeah. So first of all, for, of Service Mesh. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the same, right? Like we see customers running, I don't know, you know, we have anything from 40 data, 40 clusters to 40 data center and thousand clusters and running STO in each of those clusters. So the question is, how do you manage that? That's number one. How do, how can we help with, make it easier to, even if you're only running one cluster and one STO. So, so basically it's helping with the day two operation, with the management and so on. So take those two, that's basically solving all the problem and the connectivity. And of course we have, stuff that you need anyway if you're solving it like developer portal as well as be extending that platform with a web assembly so basically we'll, mm. we build a way to to basically extend those data plan the envoys basically with with uh with web assembly so that, that was, in the night i did see that as one of the buzzwords that web assembly seems to be coming up everywhere and it seemed to come up a lot at kubecon this year I'd, for a good reason yeah, it's, yeah i think that it will be everywhere Okay. Yeah. So just to break apart a few things, because you mentioned a lot of different names there. And if you look on the homepage for Solo, you see uh, Service Mesh built on Istio, Envoy Proxy, which are two existing um, open source projects. And then you have Glue, Edge Mesh, Portal, Extensions, Cloud, etc. So what... What do you, what are the how are the different parts relating to each other? Is, uh, are your commercial products built on top of Istio and Envoy, or are they complementing them and filling in gaps? Like what's the relationship between all the different parts? So the way our product is working is that all of them are open source and we have the core 
core model. So basically, there is an open source. So there is this thousand people right now using and st you know glue and glue mesh and basically not paying us a dime, which is totally fine and we totally appreciate that. Um, but uh, there is also a comp enterprise component that we're putting on top of it that differentiated it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of like how the the business model is working. So it's core product. It's something like, I don't know, like what Ashley doing, for instance, yep. or, Kong, yep. or any other yep. companies. Yep. Yep. Uh, so that's that. In terms of the open source itself, so we are adding on top of it, right? And that's basically the idea. So in the a gateway case, we're taking Envoy. Envoy is something that you shouldn't manage, like the, 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 you know, the configuration files should not be written by human. It should be written by machine. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it really shouldn't. And therefore, what we have is a control plan, basically, which is glue. Yeah. That basically what it's know how to do is to look at your environment, look at your, you know, your secret, get configuration from you, and basically feed the configuration to Envoy every time that something changes. So basically, it's a very simple, uh, you know, it's watching everything. Every, every time that something changes, it's just creating the snapshot, serving it to Envoy. That's the API gateway. Uh, and in Envoy, in the STL part or the, the service mesh one, it's focusing on problems that the open source is just not solving yet. So STL, okay. You know, if you want right now one STL from one cluster, you probably can take it from upstream. What well, we're adding on top of it, first of all, if you want something like FIPS compliance, if you want support, right, and making sure, you know, long-time support because the, the community one is offering only N-1, I think. Uh, so we have like N-4 and so on. So that's the first thing. But it's going all the way to, you know, again, it depends where you are on, the, on, your, on your journey, but it's going all the way to crazy multi-clusters and fell over and routing based on localization and so on. So there is, it's, it really depends where you are in the, in, the, in the journey. But it's all stuff that we are adding on top of it, including WASM extension and so on. It's mm -hmm. something that we add on top of it. I feel like that might be one of the answers to the next question. So, yeah, what, what have you been up to in the past two years? I, I think it was quite early days two years ago, if, that was, if that's correct. Yeah. I think it must have been two years ago, yeah. Um, yeah. What have you been – I remember you actually showing me a demo, I think, of Glue, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think you were yeah, the only person who actually ago. showed me a demo, which was kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. And what's been, what's been so, happening Yeah, since? I like demo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what are we doing? So – Basically, Sola is, is very unique in the way we're working, which is we're working really, really closely with our customers. So, like, mm -hmm. we yeah. have very, very close relationship with them. To be honest, when we talked two years ago, I started Glue. It was sounds like a very, very good idea, but it's not even close to where it is right now. Mm -hmm. In the point of how better it is right now, and why it's better? It's better because of customers, right? Okay, so basically, yeah. what we did, you know, we sell it to a very, very big organization. And suddenly they tell us, yes, but we need this and we need that and we need that, right? And we basically were working very hard to build them everything that they need. And in my opinion, by far, it's the best API I get with Axis today. Based on top of Envoy, the architecture is very clean. It always was clean, you know, from the get-go. We didn't re-architect or something. It's, and so on. So there is a lot of differentiator that we're doing there. There are a lot of Envoy filter that we wrote. So we have WAF, we have, you know, uh, transformation, we have SOAP filter for Envoy and so on. So there is that stuff that makes very, very better. Mm -hmm. So in the Nexus, Glue Edge today is a very solid product. I mean, I'm sure you guys are using it because <laughs> you don't even know, but trust me, you are because there's so much customer right now that's using it that, you know, you're probably using it by, by, without knowing. Um, so that in terms of Glue, eh, Glue Edge, Glue Mesh is, again, is, is, is um, you know, basically took over the, the, the service mesh. And again, just pushing the, the, the boundary. That's basically what we're doing, bringing more stuff. So the stuff that we have in our product is just not existing in the market somewhere else. And, and the stuff that we're going to announce soon will be even something for sure that no one has, which is really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but, you know, stuff like, for instance, leading the WebAssembly ecosystem on Envoy and create a Docker-like experience to extend that to our product, working a lot with the customer and hearing what they need and build it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, in the nutshell, we were just busy of making a robust product and working with our open source and closed source yeah, and enterprise community to basically just you know build a very good product. And as I said, we're pushing, so you will see what's coming for us for like a month or two. And I think that that will be 
pretty exciting. Um, actually, I was interested in hearing a bit more about the portal. Um, is that, firstly, is that also open source or is that something you are adding as a commercial? No, that's specifically we kept the commercial. Yeah, that would make sense. So the yep, thing, yep. yeah. So, I mean, I mean, the stuff that, as I said, I, I, we, we talked about gluing itself, and that's true also for, the, for, for STO. Uh, in the natural, what we're doing, we're talking, the, we, there is an open source project that a lot of people are using right now in yeah, production. Yeah. But there is also a, some component that we're putting on top of it. For instance, example, for besides our special filter, uh, for instance, something like federation. As I mm-hmm. said, there is a lot of cluster. How do you manage now a suite of clues everywhere? Um, suite of clues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and how do you communicate and how do you fill over between them and so on? Yeah. So, um, so that's some, so that one thing. And the other thing is that what we heard from our customers is that we had a lot of customers that came and said, listen, we really, really like that, though we are using Apple or we are using Kong. Yeah, and can, this is a legacy API gateway. And we really wanted to go with you, though there is some stuff that you're missing. And the main point that you're missing is developer portal, yeah. right? And we are using it. This is the way we are using, you know, our, our developer onboarding. So we, we listen. And it's not open source, but it's built exactly like all our tool is built, being in the point that it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's all CRD based, eventually consistent, yeah. cloud native, yeah. the way you will want to write it. And we, again, even there, we are constantly thinking about our customer, but we're also thinking about ourselves. And I'm thinking all the time, like, am I want to run this API get in my car? Right? This is the reason we started with Glue. I said, I don't want to run Nginx in, like, in, my, in my infrastructure. I don't want to run this monolithic crazy stuff. Yeah. So what I did instead of it, what, what, with the developer portal, for instance, we are most the work that we're doing, it's in, we're writing it in either C++ for Envoy or we're writing it in Go language. Yeah. Yep. And the way our communication between the Go component is basically gRPC. Yep. So we said, yep. well, yep. So yep. how are we going to use developer portal? Open, you know, we're not using a, a open API. We're not using Swagger. So what are we going to do? So therefore, we put in, we implemented those two there as well. So basically, we are the only one who's supporting gRPC, and we actually we are the only UI for gRPC. Uh, and, uh, and you know, there was a lot of people that, you know, basically coming just because of it. And you will see again what we're going to announce soon. I think it will be even more kind of like, so. Yeah. You can't tell me what you're going to announce soon. This is not fair. Yeah. No, we're, <laughs> so, so we're working on it very hardly. Okay, yeah. okay. And let's, let's, so let's um, dig into the extensions part because I think that's probably – the one of the bits where you've been working on it um, the most, and, uh, and which one? Sorry, the the extension. So I guess the WebAssembly ah, part, the, the web most assembly. interesting <laughs> part. So like, what's what what? Let, let's go back a step first. It's like, what is that? What do you think that's going to yes. be useful for? What do people are going to yeah. use it for? So I mean, let's go kind of like back to WebAssembly. What it is in general? Yeah. WebAssembly yeah. is a technology that people write for. Actually, that was a Mozilla project. That the yeah. idea was, yeah. how can we run an extension in the browser that will be faster? Right? We want better performance. JavaScript is not going to cut it. Can we do something else? Um, there were there were a few feature that they need or use or use cases that they needed to fill in order to be able to do something like that. Uh, which is one, for instance, run everywhere because you have a browser everywhere. Uh, feature like it has to be secure because you yeah. don't want that this custom code is going to take all your browser right down and so on. So what we did is so so that that was very very successful. But now if we're going to talk about what we're doing, um, so we are using Envoy. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the beautiful thing about Envoy is the fact that you can extend it, and the way okay. it's built, it's basically what call a a filter chain. So when the request is coming, it's going to a chain of filter that you can that there is code there. So one of them is an external auth filter, and one of them will be a rate limiting filter, yep. and eventually it will be a route filter. But in the natural, it's going there. And the beautiful about the Envoy is that you can put your own custom filter, and that's ah, what we did. Okay. So we have a soap filter. That's how we did it. We have a WAF filter, Web Application Firewall. That's how we did it. Transformation, same thing. In order to do this, you need to write the code in C++ async which means that you can't really leverage a lot of those libraries that exist. Uh, so you need to rewrite everything, which is really, really a lot of work. And then you need to recompile Envoy. 
and recompile it with another <laughs> one thing well, to do. Gonna... You need to build, <laughs> yeah, you need to build to use Basel, which is a complex tool yeah. and so on. Yeah. So we're doing it. This is what we're doing. This is what we know how to do for the last four years. Though we felt that in some some of our customers basically come to us and say to us, "Listen, we have this like security system or something, and we wanted to write our own filter, or we want some you to write for us." different filters that are very, very specific for that customer. If it's very specific to that customer, it shouldn't go to our, to our product. So now the question is, who owning those? Mm. And the idea was, is can we come with a way that customer will be able to own their own customer code, will be able to extend this very, very amazing data plan, right, it's called Envoy, and basically will be able to own it by themselves. So they yeah. will be able to write it and basically maintain it by themselves. And WebAssembly was kind of like a very interesting technology to do this because in the nutshells, as I said, it's almost writing natively, na almost nat native code. So the performance is not going to be that bad. Um, it's got, of course, it depends how much filter we will put, but in the nutshells, the performance is pretty good. And then it's, it's secure because it's running in its own sandbox. So it's, that's fine. And it's, can run in and you can write it in every language. So that's giving very powerful tool to our customers. And it's more important dynamically loaded, which means that you don't need to compile Envoy. So we took this and we said, that's very interesting. We worked together with Google and basically brought it to Envoy. So now we have Envoy proxy and you can run basically those custom, custom filter and bring this machine. But when we saw that, we said, this is awesome. This is like a very, very unique technology. And to be fair, it was ring a bell to another very cool technology that was in the past was a, a, like, a like basically Linux container. Linux container yeah. was there a long time, but no one used it until Docker make it easy to use. So when we look at this, we said, okay, Solo is all about user experience. We have a problem. Like how is that people going to work with this? To build a model on Wasm is not simple. To bring it to Android is definitely not simple. To configure Android is even harder. So how do you do this? And basically what we did, we built the Docker experience for, for extending Envoy, Envoy proxy. So basically it's very simple. It's a command line that you can do in it. Then, you know, it's basically build you all the project. Then you're putting the custom code that you need. Then you're doing Wasm code, you know, in that case it's MessyTL a, a, a build. Then you build it. Then you can push it to a registry that we built called WebAssembly yeah. Hub or to your private one. Basically, you can use it, then you can pull it, or you can just deploy it on your mesh, or on your glue, or on your vanilla envoy. And that's giving you a really, really strong, powerful, all the, basically, the piping, everything that is messy and hard, we took over ourselves. So now it's just automated, it's easy, everybody can use it. So that's basically what we did. It, um, we did it over a year ago. Mm -hmm. It's pretty okay. exciting because we already have customers running it in production, which is yeah. excited. And of course, WebAssembly support is just part of our product. So if you're using Blue yeah. Edge or Blue yeah. Edge, yeah. it's basically building to it. And if I understand correctly, that in theory means that people could write their own extensions for Envoy in whatever language they want that is supported in WebAssembly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then tell us which, which, which sidecar they want to deploy it and yeah. it's happening. Yeah. Now you can extend your metrics, you can extend your visibility, you can write your custom code, security custom code, whatever you want, basically, wherever you want. Yeah. It's really, really yeah. powerful. That, yeah, I, I can start to think how useful that could be, especially for integrating with legacy applications and all sorts of things. I mean, obviously, it has to be supported sure. by WebAssembly, but... <laughs> yeah, but we can do this, right? And, and yeah. I think that, uh, as I said, that the, the dynamically loaded is, I think, the, the big winner here. I think yeah. that would be... I believe that going forward, that probably will be the way to extend everything in the cloud. Yeah. So. Yeah. Pretty excited about that. So what were you announcing what were you um doing what were you whatevering at um at kubecon what was what was the reason for solo to be there so i mean so just before a just before um solocon hey sorry uh kubecon there was solocon i mean that's yep. quite a lot of stuff there so I can share about the stuff that we did there, but mainly in the nutshells, in every product we announced something. So for Glue Edge, for instance, is support on SOAP, which is really, really important, and a lot of other advanced products. Uh, in developer portal, we talked about GRPC. So just very, really, very quickly, really when you keep saying SOAP, do you mean the old 
So old yeah, one, okay, yeah, right, okay. that you can yeah. actually think about it. I mean, a yeah. lot of yeah. our customers yeah. 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 have yeah. a lot of legacy, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. out there, right? Yeah. And right now, it basically wasn't supported by Envoy, so yeah. you know Fair you enough. can only yeah. run the new stuff. <laughs> so that was a repeatable question, repeatable yeah. offers for our customers. Uh, in developer portal, we did GRPC, um, a, which was a big one, and you know a lot of other features that related to this. And in GlueMesh, we did a lot of features. So we changed totally the architecture to be more secure and basically a, more like the Kubernetes architecture. We add observability multi-cluster. So basically, no matter where you are, you are getting an observability okay. um, with the ability to even customize it with Wasm. We get, a, as I said, the Wasm support. We add the, the you know, what we're calling virtual destination, which is the ability to group together destination. And basically, uh, by default, it will go to the closed one. So like, for instance, I have a billing system everywhere, right? Okay. But I have a, a fee, uh, something that calling, um, that calling uh, another, another uh, sorry, something, something that calling another, um, another, you know, another service. So it, we want to do it to the close one, but if that's not there, I want to go and kind of like yeah, go okay, to the okay. longer and longer and longer, right? Until I will find one that works. So kind of like a failover component. And more and more. I mean, there's quite a lot of uh, it's feature that we works. Again, most of them closely with our customers. So, uh, and was yeah, I mean, that, that was the entire... We are the, was Sotocon mostly customers? Or is there much of a... Uh, a community behind the open source projects where it's not necessarily customers, but people who are just working on a it. Lot. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot, a lot. I mean, there is like, I think we have over close to 4,000 people in the Slack community okay. and yeah, no, there is, there's, there's a lot, a lot of people actually using it in production right now. And probably a lot of them that, you know, like big, big organization. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty exciting. Actually. It's very rewarding. Okay. Cool. Um, I think there's one other project we didn't really mention, which I, I think I remember you mentioning before, which was uh, squash. Is that something that's kind of more yeah. of a, a smaller thing you you have, or is that something that's part of the commercial offering as well? Or no. So to be honest, we start when I started the company until I raised money. I was pretty bored, so I created squash. Uh, squash was squash is a really really important project. I mean, I think that is really really useful. The only thing is that it's a developer tools. Mm -hmm. um, we brought it to a very good point, but to be fair, we didn't plan never to do it as a commercial. We mainly yeah, built it yeah. for ourselves. Yeah. The idea was, you know, we have a lot of microservices environment. We need to. It's very easy to to use it. Um, I mean, we will do something with this, but again, in terms of priority and what the customer yeah, asking, that wasn't high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it is there, it's valid, there's people using it, so it's exciting. So I get the impression you're very uh, customer-driven. <laughs> yes. But, but aside from those customers... And community-driven. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Well, uh, okay, yeah. yep. <laughs> Besides those requests that we can't completely predict yet because who knows what they will be, what's on the roadmap for the next six months that... That you can talk about. You keep telling me there are things coming. Yeah. But uh, what's what's what can you mention? Yeah. No. I mean, nothing that I can talk. About. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no. There is the regular stuff that we will continue and enhance our platform and enhance a lot of you know a lot a lot of every, every project that we have. There is a new thing that coming up, but I said, but unfortunately, I cannot talk about it yet. Yeah. And but yeah, no. I mean, just to be fair, just make it better and add more. You know. We want to make it damn simple to use service mesh, okay. right? And in order to do this, we need to, yeah, we're working with our customer and huge scale, like crazy scale, thousands yeah. of customers and so on, making so, sure that it happens. Just for the, the individual developer, which is kind of a large part of the audience of, of the show, who is, you know, maybe they work for a large company, but just is interested yeah. in, in just experimenting and, and seeing what Soto can do for them in the first place. You have a lot of moving parts. Like, where do you think someone just who thinks, that sounds interesting, I want to I wanna, wanna try this. Where should they start? 
Yeah, so I mean, when we see a lot of our customers starting on the edge, which is basically API yeah. Gateway, if you need any ingress so API Gateway, I will, I will argue and I will <laughs> gladly argue that that's the best one that exists in the market. So go, go use it and try it and it's for free, it's open source, so why not? There's tons of community behind it, a lot of people working on this, so I would recommend join the Slack and get help. I would say that if service mesh is what you're interested in, again, Gloomish is a really, really point, good point to start with it. And yeah, one more thing that we actually did announce and I forgot to say that I think is relatively important is that, you know, we're working with API Gateway for a long time now yeah. and, and Envoy specifically. And we build a lot of stuff to Envoy that is existing Glue Edge, but is not existing STO. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we basically announced is that we're basically taking all that functionality and bringing it to STO. Mm -hmm. So basically giving you the ability to have, you know, everything that we described that is unique for us, basically on the regular ingress a STO. So basically, okay. I don't yeah. know, ingress yeah. plus plus call it. Yeah. 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 So that's another thing that is going to work. So if you're working with STO, which I'm assuming a lot of people are, you know, seemingly so. probably, <laughs> yeah, it will be, it will be really, really, I think comfortable for you to, to use did, this uh, API. I, guess. I did interview the LinkerD people a couple of weeks ago. They're definitely not, but. Yeah. Obviously it's a little hard, just for a sort of wrap up question. I know it's a little hard with the online conferences and I think next KubeCon will be back to normal. Um, yeah. But uh, well, from, yeah. from the past KubeCon or from the past few months, what kind of has really interested you that is, is not necessarily directly related to what Solo is doing that you've seen and thought this is really something to look out for? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, as I said, I think I'm trying to figure out if there was anything that was like blowing my mind. I think that, that definitely, as I said, WebAssembly is something that's close to me. I also, eBPF is something that yeah. I'm pretty excited yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. So those two, I think, is the one that I'm curious about um, and see what's going on there. I don't know. I, I don't think that there was a huge... eBPF is... I, I actually, I did also have uh, a couple of months ago from um, oh, <laughs> from Cilium. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isovalent and... Um, it's just such one of these weird technologies because the underpinning has been around for ages and, yeah. <laughs> and now it's sort of like this thing everyone's talking about. Yeah, yeah, a lot of exactly. Linux people are kind of like, hey, it's been here for ages. You know, why are you all so excited? I know, I know, you know? it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, but well, Linux container was there too. I mean, it's interesting to see what we can do. I'm more okay, curious about the use cases, right? Yeah. I mean, because right now it's kind yeah. of like directly compete with service mesh. I don't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. that will be interesting to see what, what we can yeah. do with it. Yeah. Cool. So just to wrap that up, it's solo.io. I mean, I've mentioned it a few times. It's actually the the name of the company, I suppose. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. also the website. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, thanks again for joining me. And um, Yeah, it was great to see you again. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Edith, and uh, have a good day. Take care.